Okay. Yes, sir. Welcome, my dear friends. So, very good afternoon to all my dear friends and uh, welcome, uh, respected Madam Garu. So, uh, very soon you are going to attend the CPK 2023 uh, PZ entrance. So, in this regard, the final finishing touch within uh, three days, uh, our classes will going to sum up. In this regard, today's our eminent resource person, we would like to invite uh, Dr. O. Padmaja Madam Garu, Assistant Professor, Department of Botany, Thara, uh, Government College, Autonomous, Sangha Reddy. Madam, please welcome and uh, share your screen and start your session. Madam. Please welcome. Good evening, sir. Thank you, sir. Madam, good afternoon. Good afternoon, students. Sir, is it visible, sir? Yes, madam. Yes, it is visible, madam. Please welcome. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Sir, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, students. Uh, myself, Dr. Padmaja, Assistant Professor of Botany, Tara Degree College. Sir, respiration. So, in this uh, respiration, we can uh, expect one or two bits from this chapter. Uh, in this topic, we have to learn the uh, definition and what are the types of uh, respirations and uh, what are the enzymes involved in this and what are the steps and what are the significance of this uh, and uh, in which cell organs this respiration is taking place, uh, we are going to discuss now. So before we uh, entering into this, this uh, respiration, this process in which complex organic substance like carbohydrates or fats or proteins are broken down to release carbon dioxide, water and some amount of energy. So whatever the food materials, uh, that is the substrate is there, that substrate is uh, acted by the oxygen and that will be break down into carbon dioxide and water and the energy is released. And this energy is, is in the form of ATP currency. So it requires the substrates. It may be carbohydrates or fats or a protein. So, now, uh, there are two types of uh, respirations are there. One is aerobic respiration. Another is anaerobic respiration. In aerobic respiration, oxygen is used for this process. So for, for breakdown of this uh, substrate like uh, carbohydrates or proteins or fats, oxygen is very, very essential. And here there is no utilization or the use of oxygen in this process. And this aerobic respiration takes place in the cells of all the higher plants and the animals. Anaerobic respiration, it takes place in lower plants like the lower organisms like bacteria, fungi and certain endoparasites. And now in this aerobic, the glucose is completely oxidized. And here the glucose is partially oxidized in this anaerobic respiration. The end products are carbon dioxide and water and uh, end products are carbon dioxide and ethyl alcohol or the lactic acid in anaerobic respiration. So the complete oxidation of one molecule and here the partial oxidation of one molecule of glucose yields only to ATP and here for one glucose molecules here 38 ATPs are yield. So the process takes place in both cytoplasm and the mitochondria this aerobic respiration and this aerobic respiration takes place only in the cytoplasm of the cell. 
Now, where this respiration is taking place? The respiration is uh, taking place in the cell organelle. So the respiration is called as the cellular respiration. The organelle is the mitochondria. A membrane bound cellular structure and is part of the eukaryotic cells. Uh, ranges from 0 0.5 to 1.0 micrometers in diameter. They are also called as the powerhouses of the cell or the power plant of the cell. This mitochondria play an important role in the production of ATP via the process of oxidative phosphorylation. So this energy currency or the ATP. So ATP production centers are the mitochondria by the process by oxidative photophosphorylation in the electron transport chain. And now if you see the structure, these are uh, the components of mitochondria consisting of turn membrane, the diagram representing this uh, matrix and the cristae, inner membrane, outer membrane and the F1 particles on the cristae. It is smooth, the outer membrane is smooth and is composed of equal amount of phospholipids and proteins. It has large number of special proteins known as porins. Outer membrane is freely permeable to nutrients, ions, energy molecules like the ATP and NADP molecules. So the, the inner uh, substance, the matrix-like substance are present that is bound in the inner membrane. And the inner membrane is uh, foldings to form a finger-like projection called the cristae. And in between inner and outer membrane, a perimitochondrial space is present. And now here the inner membrane. The inner membrane is more complex in structure. It consisting of number of foldings into a number of folds many times and it's known as the cristae. So whatever the electron transport are taking place, that is taking place on the cristae, is strictly permeable. It is permeable only to oxygen. ATP and also helps in the regulating transport of metabolites across the membrane. And now, the uh, the space between the outer and inner membrane of mitochondria is called as the perimitochondrial space. It has the same composition as that of the cell cytoplasm. And the matrix, the matrix is bounded inside the inner membrane of mitochondria. It's a complex mixture of proteins and enzymes. Whatever the enzymes are essential for the respirations are all there in the matrix. These enzymes are important for the synthesis of ATP molecules, mitochondrial ribosomes, transfer RNAs, and mitochondrial DNA. So, uh, if from uh, all the cell organelles, these chloroplasts and mitochondria are considered as the semi autonomous cell organelles because they contain its own DNA and cellular respiration. The process by which the organism obtains energy available in the carbohydrates. So ATP used as the energy currency. And now here the, the restrictions we already come across the different types of restrictions are there. And a number of organisms, mainly the bacteria and the uh, single cellular, unicellular fungi like yeast can carry on in the absence of oxygen. So they can be produced the lactic acid or the uh, maybe the ethyl alcohol. And in anaerobic respiration by the diagrammatic representation, we can get a brief idea by showing, by seeing this. So the glucose in, in uh, combining with oxygen, it entering into the Glycolysis is taking place, that means the breakdown of the glucose is taking place, that process is called the glycolysis. And the end product of the glycolysis is pyruvic acid. This pyruvic acid enters into the Krebs cycle, and later the electron transport is taking place. This will be helpful for the oxidative photophosphorylation for the formation of ATP, carbon dioxide, and water. And now, 
Yeah, the respiration is the biological oxidation. That means in presence of oxygen, the, the substrate is breaking down. So oxygen is used for the breakdown of organic materials to release energy and the carbon dioxide. So it is occur in the cell. So it is called as a cellular respiration. Respiration is of anaerobic respiration. In the anaerobic respiration, the presence of, in the absence of oxygen, respiration is taking place. There may be the formation of the ethyl alcohol that is called the fermentation. And another is in presence of oxygen that uh, respiration is taking place that is called as the aerobic respiration. So if you study the uh, brief, uh, enlarged study of this anaerobic respiration, aerobic respiration is the biological oxidation occurring in the absence of oxygen for the breakdown of organic materials to release energy, lactic acid, and carbon dioxide. So in anaerobic respiration, here the absence of oxygen will be taking place and the substrate will be uh, oxidized and the releases lactic acid and carbon dioxide. It occurs in the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is the liquid substance that is present in the cell. It takes place in the absence of oxygen. And now this anaerobic respiration in which Glucose is partially oxidized without using oxygen to yield, uh, to yield the lactic acid or ethyl alcohol, depending upon the organ. If you see the chemical formula of glucose, C6H12O6 is giving rise to ethyl alcohol, carbon dioxide, and the energy is released here. And, uh, and the glucose is also being converted into lactic acid. So fermentation is actually anaerobic respiration by certain microorganisms. Examples of uh, is that ethyl alcohol or lactic acid or acetic, acetic acid fermentation. In this process, stored food is oxidized to certain compounds instead of carbon dioxide and water. So the main concept is this anaerobic respiration is taking place in the absence of and the, they yield ethyl alcohol on the lactic acid with releasing some amount of energy. And it takes place in the absence of oxygen. It is very common in animal muscles also. In aerobic respiration, organic compounds are passed through the glycolysis for oxidation. During glycolysis, the, the glucose is converted to pyruvate through a series of reactions. And in muscles and some bacteria, the pyruvic acid is converted to lactic acid by the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. This enzyme we have to remember. The enzyme lactate dehydrogenase, this uh, pyruvic acid is converted to lactic acid. This uh, reaction uses uh, NA NADH2 with the release of NAD. And now, the glycolysis. That means here the pyruvic acid, what the pyruvic acid, when the pyruvic acid is formed from the glycolysis, if the oxygen is available, that will be entered into the Krebs cycle. If the oxygen is absent, it may be helpful for production of this lactic acid or alcohol. So in different cells, the pyruvic acid is handled in three ways. That may be formation of lactic acid fermentation or alcoholic fermentation. If oxygen is present, it will be entering into aerobic respiration by the Krebs cycle. So the common step is the pyruvic acid is the common step for the class, for the aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. And now in the fermentation, see these are uh, the some of the bacteria. Uh, but maybe uh, the, these lower organisms, this type of uh, uh, respiration will be seen here. It is incomplete oxidation of glucose under anaerobic condition. We are seeing these pictures like in the petri dish, the bacteria, the fungi, the development of the fungi or the bacteria. It occurs in many prokaryotes and unicellular eukaryotes. The prokaryotes like the bacteria and the unicellular eukaryotes like the yeast. So the types of fermentation, they may be alcoholic fermentation depending upon the organism that may be the lactic acid fermentation. So here the yeast, uh, these are the unicellular eukaryotes and the lactic acid uh, bacteria. 
and this the production of this uh, lactic acid or the alcoholic fermentation they are mainly used in the commercial process and here alcoholic fermentation here the pyruvic acid formed from glucose is converted to carbon dioxide and ethanol the enzymes the pyruvic acid decarboxylate and alcohol dehydrogenase catalyze this reaction so the yeast is considered as the uh, unicellular eukaryotic organism that is the uh, belongs to fungi here these uh, uh, yeast are mainly uh, used in the alcoholic fermentation the production and in the beverages we are also using this the yeast poison themselves to death when the concentration of alcohol reaches about to 30% Whenever the more amount will be there, that will be threat to this yeast also. And here we are seeing the uh, schematic representation. The glucose is converted to glycerol dehydrate triphosphate and uh, uh, the three phosphoglyceric acid and next is the phosphoenol pyruvic acid. This is converted to pyruvic acid. If that pyruvic acid, that may be changes to lactic acid or that may be entering into the formation of the ethanol. And now the carbohydrates are converted into glucose. Glucose enters the glycolysis. Proteins are converted to amino acids like alanine, uh, alpha keto acid, and aspartic acid. They are passed into the glycolysis. The fats are converted into glycerol and fatty acid. That means the end products. What are the end products of the fats? Is the glycerol and the fatty acids, and the proteins are the amino acids. And glycerol is converted into glycerol dehydrate and is passed into the glycolysis. So the fatty acid was passed through B oxidant, beta oxidation and converted to acetyl coenzyme A that enter into the PEP cycle. And the end products of anaerobic oxidation are energy, lactic acid, and carbon dioxide. The organic compounds are incompletely oxidized in anaerobic respiration. So the incomplete oxidation, that means the full, the, the whatever the substrate is there, does not break down into completely. And in anaerobic respiration produces only two ATP molecules. This process is rare in plants and common in animals. It does not occur throughout the life of plant, but it occurs when there is a shortage of oxygen. And the fermentation. The fermentation is a biological oxidation occurring in the absence of oxygen that is also come under anaerobic respiration. But the breakdown of organic materials to release energy, the end products will be the ethyl alcohol and the carbon dioxide. It is also occur in the cytoplasm of the cell. It takes place in the absence of oxygen and it's mainly seen in the lower organisms like uh, uh, prokaryotes and the unicellular eukaryotic organisms like the yeast. And during glycolysis, glucose is converted into pyruvic acid through a series of reactions. So, during uh, the end product of glycolysis, pyruvic acid. What is the substrate that is participating in the glycolysis? Glucose. So, glucose, the uh, glycolysis means the glucose is breaking down into pyruvic acid. So, the term is known as glycolysis. In bacteria and yeast, the pyruvic acid is converted into ester dehydrate and CO2 by the enzyme pyruvate decarboxylase. The pyruvic acid is giving rise to ester dehydrate presence of CO2 by an enzyme known as pyruvate decarboxylase. And ester dehydrate is converted into ethyl alcohol. These two steps we have to remember. It may be asked in the bits also. So, the acetal dehydrate is converted into ethyl alcohol by the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase in the presence of NADH2. And NAD is releasing NAD and the ethyl alcohol. In lactic acid bacteria, the enzyme lactic acid dehydrogenase converts pyruvic acid into lactic acid by consuming NADH2. So the pyruvic acid is given to like lactic acid and relieving the NAD by taking NADH2. So in this process, the fermentation produces the two ATP molecules. Now we are entering into the aerobic respiration. This is the total breakdown of the organic substance in presence of oxygen.
So aerobic respiration is the biological oxidation occurring in the presence of oxygen for the breakdown of organic materials to release the energy. So the stored food get completely oxidized, totally break down to water, carbon dioxide, and some amount of energy is released. And this uh, converting of uh, glucose in presence of oxygen to carbon dioxide, water, and the amount of energy is known as aerobic respiration. The aerobic respiration is one in which molecule oxygen is used for the complete oxidation of the glucose to yield uh, uh, the end product is CO2 water and 38 ATP molecules are formed here. This equation we also we have to remember. And it, uh, this aerobic respiration is takes place in the cytoplasm and the mitochondria is also entering. It takes place in the presence of oxygen. So, if at the study of this, the aerobic respiration, number of uh, the aerobic respiration mainly consisting of glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and electron transport and oxidative phosphorylation. These steps also we have to remember that. That means that after this, which step uh, next is participating, like that they may be asked the questions. That means the first one is the glycolysis. And next is the oxidative decarboxylation or the Krebs cycle, later electron transport and oxidative phosphorylation. Already uh, phosphorylation come in the photosynthesis that known as the phosphorylation. If the ATP is formed in the presence of uh, light is called as photophosphorylation. But here we are saying that oxygen so aerobic respiration has three steps, glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport system. And now this uh, glycolysis is also called as EMP pathway because this was discovered by Emden Mayorov and Peranas. So it is also called as EMP pathway. It is the common respiratory pathway for the uh, aerobic and the anaerobic respiration. And this glycose is taking place in the cytoplasm of the cell. And in this, there is a degradation of glucose. So glycolysis is when the glucose is breaking down to form the pyruvic acid. And here the glucose is a six carbon carbon and it is uh, divided to give rise to two molecules of pyruvic acid which are three carbon compounds. That means the glucose is six carbon compound and the pyruvic acid is three carbon compound and the splitting of the glucose is taking place to go rise to two molecules of pyruvic acid without uh, uh, utilizing this oxygen. It takes place in the cytoplasm of the cell and common to aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So this glycols is the common step for the aerobic and anaerobic respiration and it was discovered by the uh, Emden Mayon of Parana. So it is also called as the EMP pathway and it is mainly taking place in the cytoplasm of the cell. And this is the important one. Uh, we have to remember that the respiratory coefficient. The respiratory coefficient formula is volume of CO2 evolved and the, by the volume of oxygen absorbed. For example, in the glucose, the formula is C6H12O6. So, uh, the, the U raised to 6 carbon dioxide and the 6 oxygen. So, 6 by 6 is 1. So, the carbohydrate, it is 1. The respiratory coefficient is the 1. So, RQ means we have to remember that formula at the same time, this, uh, 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 the values, the RQ values of uh, carbohydrates, fats and the organic substance like citric acid, oxalic acid, tartaric acid and the malic acid. That all acid is above the one and the fats are below the one and the carbohydrates is equal to one. This we can be uh, expect the bit from this point of and now, uh, EMP pathway, this is the simple remember.